everyone. I am about to introduce author Molly White, and we're going to be talking about this book called Sweet Tea and Sympathy. And she already has a sequel out for this book, but this is the one, the first one in the series. So I read this one, and we're going to be talking about this series. And a lot, I have a lot of questions. And it was a really, really fun book. And she has written like 30 plus books. So we have a lot to talk about. Everyone here is Molly. Hi everyone, I am so excited because I am speaking with author Molly Harper and we are talking about two books that are in her eclectic Southern, or Southern Eclectic series. I don't know which way it goes, but there they are. <laughs> Southern Eclectic series, yes. And that is my first question, Mar Molly. I was reading it, I'm like, what? As I saw the cover, I'm like, wait, what is Southern Eclectic? I don't think I've ever heard of that. It was, it was just sort of... It's, it's a title for the series, and we thought it just sort of embodied the spirit with which we were approaching it. These are This is a very eclectic group of people living in the South, running a funeral home slash uh, <laughs> marina bake shop yeah. in Georgia. And so we just wanted to kind of lay it out there for people, like, this is what you, you can expect. Right, like, this isn't going to be your normal, um, they, what do they call it, chick lit? The Chick lit, yes, Chick -lit. which I personally really enjoy that genre. Um, I do but, too. But, you know, it's, it's far from typical just because of the occupations of the people. Um, I, I think that uh, Southerners by nature are, tend to be sort of quirky and unique, but these people are certainly far more unique than the average yeah. uh, Georgian or Southern in general. So, Yeah, my daughter-in-law is from like savannah but then she grew up in tennessee so, but she's like very southern right uh -huh. and um and i'm from pennsylvania okay oh. and the first time i had gone because my uh, son was in the service and he was stationed down in south carolina he met her down there and mm -hmm. i had gone to visit and um she was like sweet tea and i'm like no what do you mean and she's like you know sweet tea sweet tea i'm like you mean sugar in it she was like uh, you never you no. don't know it <laughs> It's, it's a major cultural difference. And what's funny is when our northern cousins would come down and visit and we'd go to restaurants and they'd say sweet or unsweet. And they would have they would just look at us like, what kind of backward place are you living in? Like, what does this mean? And we would have to explain to them that sweet tea is properly boiled, you know, with the sugar in. So you get an evenly mixed dispersion of the sugar in the drink. And it's not just all soda with the bottom. So. Well, right, because... I when I thought it was like oh just add sugar but then I tasted it and I'm like no it's totally different it's yeah. totally different and now they live in Arizona and I know she's missing her sweet tea <laughs> so <laughs> you can make it but it's literally like making rock candy and I see it at the same time like it's it's a very complicated process it is and I don't like it because I think it's so sweet like. <laughs> you know? I never, I never actually acquired a taste for it until I was pregnant, and then like it sounded like a really reasonable thing to drink a liter of iced tea with like this much sugar in it. So yeah, <laughs> you got you got your proper sugar rush if you needed it in yes. the afternoon, right? <laughs> it, was, it was, I was drinking for two. So <laughs> that's right. So I love the title. You, I mean, you'd been given me the Kindle edition and yes. I was really busy. So what I did is I went and downloaded the audio too, because I wanted mm -hmm. to, well, I found myself listening to that audio more than reading the Kindle. It was fun. It was like really fun. Like I, I had to go see my son in Philly yesterday. So I was like, okay, well I can listen to it on the drive. Right. Uh -huh. and, and that's where I do most of my reading is in the car. Right. It was like kind of a kill two birds yeah. kind of a thing. But then last night when I was finishing it, I'm like, I could sit down and read. And then I'm like, I was sitting, actually sitting and listening. <laughs> and I think that's a good thing. That's why I wanted to tell you because I love a good audio book. If you're getting hooked on an audio book, that's a good thing. Right. Oh, yeah, and I've been very, very fortunate in that Amanda Ronconi has been my narrator from the beginning of my career, and she just has this amazing knack for the sarcasm and wit that is within the, the dialogue. My books tend to do very well as audiobooks because of the amount of dialogue involved, and Amanda just has a mastery of that delivery. And, I mean, it was, it was funny because um, when I first started working with Audible, they sent me a clip. They sent me one clip. And they said, what do you think of this person? And I thought, she sounds great. You know, Booker. And it just happened to be Amanda. And so it's just totally serendipitous that she happened to be the person that was just best suited to be the voice in my head, so to speak. 
Yeah, and I started off reading it, and then when I started listening to it, I loved Margot like that much more. Like, mm-hmm. I like, and I think that's why I think you're right. I think she embodied Mar like Margot herself, like, mm-hmm. the delivery of her lines and everything. I was just cracking up. I, I just it was. <laughs> and it's it's very rare that she'll say a line. I'm like, that's not really how I heard it in my head. You know, she really just seems to have an instinctual knack for how I meant things to sound. And um, it's funny that we actually we just met for the first time last month uh, after ten years of working together. Wow. Um, we we've spoken on the phone frequently. We email each other very frequently, but it was just the first time we actually had a chance to. Because I don't travel very often, you know, I have a family work schedule, right? You know, on all that, and um, it's just hard to kind of get towards New York. Uh, we live so far away, so it was really neat to be able to sit down with her for the first time and like have a face to the the voice, so well, to speak. Yeah, I definitely understood when I went on your page on your website and everybody asks you like about the audiobooks and I was like, no kidding, I don't I don't see that very often where mm-hmm. authors are like, are you coming out with the audio? Are you coming out with the audio? Like I need oh, the yes. audio. And your your learned, fans, your fans yes, seem very attached. That we yeah. have to have the audio book come out on the day that the book the ebook and the in the print format comes out because otherwise everyone is unhappy. Yeah. So we try to make as many people happy as possible. Yeah, I see that your fans are very much loving your audio. So that's that's just awesome because it's another way of enjoying it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't listen to very many, so I I thought I was fun. I was I had a really good day. I had a really fun day with her <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Well, if you're going to travel, that's definitely the way to do it, though. Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, hold up these books because I I had been seeing these covers all year, okay? Because look at how beautiful they are. They are gorgeous. I mean, I've been seeing them on Instagram. I mean, Sweet Tea came out last year. And then Ancient Peach came out this year. And I saw people making pictures with these books. And that's kind of how I found you. Because I'm like, I have to talk to her. Because her covers are absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. Well, it's good to know that Instagram is is effective in that way. I kind of wonder sometimes. And the next book is called uh, Give Me Some Sugar. And it has got the most gorgeous illustration of a red velvet cake on the cover. So it's one of those things, like, if you didn't want red velvet cake before... (laughs) You're going to want it just by holding the book. So I'm really excited about that. And that is Duffy's story uh, with Lucy, who is a baker who is wanting to open up a bakery in town. And um, her, her specialty is obviously red velvet. So. Okay, so I, I read Sweet Tea, and that's about Margot and Kyle Margo. and everything. Okay, so then Ain't She a Peach, what is that? What what that story? What, who that's is the Brittany, okay, the so, Undertaker. Okay. And uh, she is a very... She is very casual about her love life, so to speak, and um, she doesn't date. And so she she kind of takes excursions into town, into the big city every once in a while to you know blow off a little steam, and does so, and leaves the next day without really talking to her partner very much. And then she meets the new sheriff, and it turns out to be this guy that she hooked up with while she was on one of her crazy weekends in Atlanta. And his feelings are actually quite hurt <laughs> by the fact that she ran <laughs> off on him. So uh, he he's not very nice to her, in fact, at first, and because uh, his feelings are hurt, and she doesn't always respond very uh, in a very mature fashion <laughs> when she's confronted like that. So at first, it's very much an oil and water situation, but because Frankie is so confident at her job, it's really hard for him not to respect her in that way. So it was really fun to deal with someone who is very colorful and. Uh, kind of loud and quirky, but at her core, she is still just very intelligent and very capable at what she's supposed to be doing in life. And so you have to take her seriously. And then the next one is about which character? Uh, Duffy and Lucy. Duffy and Lucy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I just love these characters. I'm going to read the first paragraph. I, I actually screenshot okay. this. Okay. Because I want everybody to get the feel of like your writing. And I love this first paragraph. Margot Carey leaned her forehead against the warm truck window as it bounced along the pitted Georgia highway. She closed her eyes against the picturesque landscape as it rolled by. Green, green, green. Everything was so effing green here. (laughs) Right away, I started laughing because I was like, oh my God, I know I'm going to love Molly because this is such a great first paragraph right there. (sighs) And it exposes to the main character right away and then you get the sense of her right away. I mean, that's Margot right away, you know? She has had a professional um, downfall. 
shall we say. And that was, I actually got a little paralyzed when I was writing that first chapter because I knew that something absolutely horrible had to happen to Marco in order to completely derail her career. But it had to be something that she wouldn't come off as completely incompetent Mm -hmm. because she's good at her job. It's just sometimes bad things happen, no matter how prepared you are or how good you are at something. Um, and Mark, in Margo's case, that happened to be a chef that did not listen to her about a uh, food allergy, and he brought in a shrimp tower, which the main guest of this gala was allergic to, and then uh, flamingos, as it turns out, survive on shrimp. So, or they can survive on shrimp, so they really like it, and they went after the, the tower and disrupted <laughs> the gala, and, you know, all these women are running around in their gowns, and the fi- there starts a fire, and the fire alarms, and all the sprinklers start going off, and so yeah, it was it was fun to come up with that scenario, but it's one of those things where my husband's like, what did you do today? And I'm like, I had a bunch of flamingos attack some socialites, and he's like, sure you did, babe. <laughs> all right. He's just, he's so used to it. It's sad. <laughs> well, I, that's why this book was so much fun. I mean, you get into the real, I love like the, the food, the atmosphere. You know, I haven't spent a lot of time down there, but it exposed me to a lot of things, you know, and I, I learned stuff. I mean. <laughs> I think that's what's so interesting about the South is everybody kind of thinks of it as this one big region where everything is the same. But, you know, Georgia is very different from Mississippi, oh. is very different from Alabama, is very different from Tennessee and Kentucky. Every little region is its own thing. And so I'd actually been down to this area of Georgia and really loved it. And just the people were so nice and the food was amazing. And um, and so I, it took, you know, a lot of time to kind of research the things, what's different about this area than the area that I'm used to. But I still hope that, that, that my, my love of the culture and the food and the people came across. Yes, absolutely. It was so much fun. So much fun. And then, so I go on your website and I was going through your books and I was like, I have to ask, you write such a variety of different genres. (laughs) And I was like, oh my gosh, you are amazing. Like, so usually people stick to like one kind of thing, you know, and you never have been able to though. Um, And I think that's kind of the career of one, or the the key to one career longevity and two not getting bored with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just trying out new things. Uh, I'd written four vampire books and then I uh, got pregnant with my son and I was on maternity leave. I was like, I'm just going to write this. And one last thing, this, you know, uh, book about a woman who's going through a horrible divorce and learning from it. You know, it's cause it was different. It was something I could do in my spare time when I was home with my son. And, you know, it was just something to kind of keep yourself on your toes and learn and new, do new things. Yeah, I and I love that. And who doesn't love the vampire? I mean, I went through my whole like vampire thing with, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you. I, I, there was a time in the bookstore there were like vampire books, like there was yes. an aisle of vampire books. You yeah, know? so I, I think that there are some readers that still enjoy that. I certainly hope so. I love writing them. So, yeah. um, you know, it's obviously not quite the huge genre that it used to be, but I think that there's always going to be an interest in that. Yeah. Yeah, it's the para, like paranormal or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, like that they call it. So, all right. So you have another one coming out on this series. And then what do you have plans for what's next? I'm finishing up a novella, which is about Margo. And I'm actually hoping to finish it today, to be honest. Um, <laughs> uh, Margo and Kyle and uh, their wedding planning process. You know, uh, I don't want to spoil anything for you, so I'm not going to go into too much detail there. But uh, that's been fun. Um, I have written a series of young adult books uh, with the consultancy of my daughter. Uh, I'll give her a co-writing credit when she actually puts words on paper. Oh. <laughs> Until then, she's like, uh, she is my consultant. Um, so I'm working on the second book in that series. Um, there are two new Half Moon Hollow books coming um, that I'm working on. And after that, this is sort of the sky's the limit. I've got a bunch of different ideas, uh, but nothing I can announce officially. And then, of course, we're, uh, we're continuing the Mystic Bayou series, which is that Audible exclusive um, where you can, the, the audiobook comes out, and then six months later, the ebook and the print uh, availability comes out. So. You know what, Molly? I'd love to live in your head. <laughs> you, know? you don't want to be in here. <laughs> I think it would be fun. It's like all this Southern stuff and then vampires. And I think it would be really fun in there. <laughs> it's, you know, it's one of those things where I literally work home alone all day, but I'd never feel lonely. <laughs> I <don't think> so. 
which is sad. Um, no, and, and my husband, you know, Lord bless him, we've been together for 25 years now, and he married a uh, newspaper reporter, <laughs> and he got stuck with this. Um, so, yeah, no, but it's, it's been a blessing. I mean, I'm able to stay home and, and write full time and, you know, be available with my kids and my family, and um, so it's it's just been one of those things that was just a tremendous gift, and I'm really, really grateful for it. Oh, absolutely. You are so gifted. So show everybody the covers again, because on my Instagram tonight, Molly has graciously decided to give away a copy of each of these books. So I am so excited. I am I know people are going to want to be jumping at these. These covers are beautiful, and I can't wait for the next one. Call me. I'll read it. And there will there will be extra goodies if you win the the books. Yay! So, so you know, I think I would much rather these covers be on the camera than my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, when the when is the next one coming out in this series? I, I I'm not entirely sure. Um, I should know that. That's okay. <laughs> I will. That's okay, but you know what? I, in the meantime, I'm going to read the other one. I'm going to read Angel okay. Peach, and then we can talk about the third one because I can't wait. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you have a great day. Have fun writing today because I can't thank wait for you. that one. That, that's going to be awesome. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll have all of Molly's links listed here below. Go to my Instagram and win those books. Thank you so much, Molly. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Wasn't she fun? I knew she was going to be because her books are so much fun. And after we got done taping, I found out that the next one, the third book in this series, is coming out in April 2019. I think she said April. March or April. No, I think she said April. April 2019. So um, that's awesome. I cannot wait. In the meantime, I'm going to read Ain't She a Peach. And, you know, I'm kind of excited about those vampire books. I have to tell you, I haven't read a vampire book in a long time. And I love love her writing. She is such a talented writer. So go over to my Instagram and um, you can get a chance to win a copy of each of the first two of the series just in time for the new one to come out. Thank you for watching everyone.